you like a Vuce Reviews logo? If you do, then you might want to buy a t-shirt with the channel's logo. Just head to geekygoodies.com slash Reviews and grab a t-shirt for yourself or your friends. By buying Vuce Reviews t-shirts, you are supporting the channel, and I'm thankful for that. And don't forget that you can also support the channel through Patreon. Just head to patreon.com slash Reviews and choose the reward level that suits you best. Your support means a lot. With enough support, this channel will continue providing you with the content and you will be able to contribute to that as well. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports the channel. Hello there folks, today we are taking a look at the game called Imaginarium. It's published by Bombix and the designers are Bruno Catala and Florian Cirex. Now I want to mention that this game is published in Europe. There will be a Kickstarter on 16th of May, the same day as this review goes up. So I will definitely put the link up for the Kickstarter, go check it out. And also this will be for the US distribution of the game, so you will definitely get this game if you want to. Now what's this game about? This is about a steampunk world and engineers and this weird machineries and such. And you are building your machines and trying to be the best engineer out there. So let's take a look at how the game works. Imaginarium is played over the course of several rounds until somebody gets to 20 points, then the end game will be triggered and then you will play the same amount of turns and at the end whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. Now, where you can get all the points? So, the main thing where you can get them is the objectives. So, there you can get the most of the points, but you can also get some points from the machines from a certain action called trading and then you can get some extra points at the end of the game by getting the majority in each of the resource. So, but how the game is played? It's kind of like a worker placement, but you're basically choosing not the, not, not the worker spot, but you're choosing the card, or you're choosing charcoalium, which is basically the currency of the game. This is the charcoalium over here. With charcoalium you can buy the cards, you can buy the specialists that are up over there, I'm going to talk about them in a moment as well. And basically you can also trade Charcoalium into resources and resources into Charcoalium. These are all the different actions. Now, these are your figurines over here. And these are your workers, basically. So, whoever is the first over here, first of all, you will put them out over here. So, if I want to have this card, I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to see how much I, can, I have to pay for that. So, this number over here plus the number on the card. That's the cost of the card. So, 3 plus 2, it's 5. So, I have to pay five of that charcoalium in order to purchase that card. And everyone will put their figurine somewhere to get certain cards. Now if you put it up here, you can see there are no cards over there, then you will just get charcoalium. You will just get the currency. And that's it. Really easy. So let's say everyone has done the stuff over here. Now the first thing you're going to do, uh, you're going to see who is the first on this line to the left he or she will be performing the actions. First of all, what you can also do, you have your um, board over here and then under it you have that machinery. So you stick it right over here. I'm gonna put it right now so you can see all of that. So the thing is that these machines produce resources for you. For example, this one produces charcoalium, one charcoalium. So first of all, you're going to collect uh, the resources that are produced, and this one produces um, crystals, water, crystals, I think. So, um, but you can see there is number one, three, and five. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. So first of all, you get the resources from the machines you already have, and then you will purchase the card. You purchase the card, you pay the money, so three plus three is six, you pay six charcoalium, and you get the card. Now, when you get the card, it's not built yet. It has to be repaired, it has to be built. And also, to notice, there are only four spots over here. So, each machine takes one spot, but you can also combine machines, and I'm going to talk about that as well in a moment. So, whenever you get the card, you put it aside, you have to build it. In order to build it, you have to spend the resources. And these are the resources written over here. So, you spend them, you will build it. But you can build it as one of the actions. Now, when you got the card or you got the charcoalium, now it's time for you to choose two of the six actions with these arrows over here. But you can see 
you can point to two certain actions. So you cannot do this and this action because that's how the arrows work over here. So what are the different actions we hear? So first of all, this is a really easy action. With this, you can trade back and forth. You can trade your column into different resources and so on. And you can also buy victory points and you can do that up to three times. So over here, and this is the important action, you can repair machines that you have on the side over here. So with this action, you can repair one machine. You pay the resources, you put it in one of the slots over here. With this one, you just get your column. With this one, you can buy a specialist. We're gonna look at the specialist later. With this one, you can basically uh, dismantle the machine. And how, it, how it's going. So if you have the machine over here, which is built, when you dismantle this machine, when you destroy this machine, you get the resources back, but you get twice the resources back when it's built. It's really cool. Or you can also take just two victory points. When, this, when the machine is not built, so it's on your side, you haven't repaired it yet, then you can only get those resources once and not the victory points. So you cannot choose the victory points instead. So that's how you do that. And the last action is the combination. So combining all the cards. Now, how does it work? So as you can see, some of those cards over here have those sides over here. So the P4, T1, T2. That means that this card is combinable with P4, T1, T2. And that's where those things over here come into play. The thing is that, let's say I have those three machines built in my slots over here. And I choose maybe those two actions. I'm gonna destroy something, I'm gonna combine. What I can do, I can combine this card, which is also P4, with this card. So they are combinable with each other. Now that means that if I have only one of those um, combined, basically one card, then I get one resource each turn produced. If I combine both of them, I will get three resources. If I get the third copy, I will get five resources. If they are separately, they will each give me one resource, but I have to combine them in order to get their productivity higher. So that's really cool. But you can also combine them with those purple cards, which are basically the conversion cards. As you can see, I can combine this card, which is P4, you can see by this one P4, with T2, I can combine that. So when I put it like that, and I can do it only with one card, this resource will automatically contribute into this card. This card separately means that I can trade one resource into a certain resource. So I can trade maybe a crystal into, um, I don't know what it is, basically one of the resources. Um, so into kind of metal. So if I combine this one, then this resource contributes automatically into this card over here, which means that now those crystals under this card will automatically go into producing this one. So it becomes kind of a, like a production card, but it can only produce one resource still. Not the three. The three resources over here means that if I get two uh, T2 cards, so if I get two of, of that same card, then I can convert three resources into three metal. It's a little bit complicated, but once you start playing, you will figure it out. And that's basically it. So you will, you will uh, build those machines, then you will combine them eventually to get your productivity higher and you are getting all the resources in order to get new cards or to build new cards. And some of the cards are attacking cards as well, where you can steal resources from other players. Uh, the bad part about that one, they're they not combinable with, uh, with the others. And it's also hard to get rid of some of them. So for example, these golden cards, they give you some special ability or they give you, for example, here, they give you victory points and you combine two of those same cards, you get three victory points each turn, which is a lot. I mean, you need to get to 20 at least, but three points is a lot each turn. So, but you can see the symbol over here, you cannot destroy this card. So if you build this card into a machinery or into onto your board over here, to your workshop, then it takes one of the spots over here and you will have only three other spots left. You cannot dismantle it. But usually if you build this one card, you can, you can later on, if you don't want this card anymore, you can dismantle it and then 
take it away. The cool part also about this one is that you cannot choose the same combination of actions twice in a row. So if you have chosen those two, you cannot leave it the same way. You have to at least turn it once. But you can turn it the other way or here. So you have to find those combinations you want. And let's take a look at the objectives and the specialists as well. But as you can see, just for a moment, I'm going to show you briefly. There are a lot of cards. There are also the defending cards. So if somebody attacks you, you can put up the defense. You can build the defense card against that. Anyway, let's take a look at the objectives first. So as you can see, those objectives over here, they're really simple. For example, this one says that you need to get three of the same resources production. So uh, produced. Three of the same resources produced. Then you take one of the tokens, of your tokens, of your color, and put them down here. You get three points. Everyone else who gets to this objective can also put their token over there, but they will get one point less, so they will get two points instead. Here you need to get the machinery of level two. Three, if you have three machines of level two in your workshop, it's great. If you have six machines in your workshop, and that's you can only do, you have four slots, so you can only do that if you combine machines. If you produce six resources and two of them are different, or if you have two purple cards, you have those two cards in your uh, workshop, you have three specialists. So it's extremely easy. So you get three, four, five points. Um, not two, I think there's no uh, two points. So five is the most and three is the least. And let's take a look at the specialist as well. As you can see, you have all the specialists over here. For example, with this one, it says that at the end of the game, when you will look at the majority of each resource who has the majority, you usually get two points with this one, you get three points. So with this specialist over here, when you take a card from the center, you can also uh, take a card from the, uh, from, from the deck and you pay three money. I hope it is, but you can take a look at the rule book. With this one, you can get some extra objectives and you can pick one for yourself and this will be your personal objective. Then, for example, this one over here says that you can use the building action twice. So usually you can build only one card, with this one you can build two cards at once. With this one you get extra points with objectives. Um, I don't really remember this one. Oh, you can use the machine of another player. And with this one you get more trading. So you can usually trade, do buy or sell three times. With this one you can get it five times. With this one you don't have to pay the cost of the cards, so you pay less for the cards. With this one you can do either the two uh, repair or you can uh, dismantle two. So usually you do each action once. You get two extra spots or slots in, in your workshop, for example. On this one, you, uh, when you trade resources, usually you have to pay five charcoalium in order to get one victory point. With this one, you, you get it with three charcoalium, one victory point. So it's really great. And you also have only three spots in your workshop for the specialists over there. And when you get the specialist, you cannot get rid of that specialist. So when you have all the three specialists taken, that's it. And the cost of the specialist over here, you also paid in charcoalium. So, and that's how you play Imaginarium. So Imaginarium, aha. First of all, components not for because I always do that first. Now the components are great and the arts is it's weird. Now, let's take a look at the components first. So the components, um, the, the one problem I had, uh, that the workshops bend it a little bit. So I put them uh, under the heavy weights overnight and they're a little bit better. The cool part about that is there are those small dots, uh, small additions, uh, like, like dots which you put under the workshop. And this is because then, then the workshops will not slide around the table. When you, when you use the arrows for the actions, which is really cool addition. I like that, but as the workshops bended, there was no use for them. So that's a small thing about that one. The card quality is fine, um, a little bit glossy and it can, I don't know, um, maybe you should sleeve the cards. Uh, it, they're, they're not the best quality over there. So I would prefer linen finish instead of the other one. 
But still, the production of all the, the resources is really cool. The wooden resources look like wooden resource. The crystals look like crystals and so on. Charcolium is really cool resource as well. And then we have the, the, the box for the resources. Uh, you put it at the center of the table, it's really easy to take. So they fought through the production process and basically the unboxing process of this game and putting this out and getting the setup as easy as possible. And uh, yeah, overly, I like the production and the minis are really cool and I saw them painted as well uh, in Twitter and I really like how they are painted because, because the art is so weird and so cool and, and different. So if we take a look at the art now, the, the art is, yeah, it is weird. So when I did the unboxing video for this game, I laughed a lot because I was like, it's, it's weird the combinations of animals and machinery and kind of a picturesque and the kind of real world versus fantasy and steampunk kind of combines into this big, big weirdness. Once, once more, I'm going to use that word. But it's cool, it's different, I like that. We should do something different, and that's great. And the teeth uh, on, the, on, the, on the board itself, it's the crusher where you put the discarded cards. And it's a little bit gross, but it's cool. But if you take a look at the gameplay, now once you go into that game, once you start this puzzling nature, once you feel this puzzling nature of the game, you will not take, we will not look at the artwork that much anyway. So you will not really see, oh, this is this picture, this is this picture. You will look at the symbols because this is a puzzly game. Now, this is also an engine building game, but the engine you're building is constantly changing or you have to change in order to be successful in this game. If you will concentrate too much on just keeping all the cards, you will be stuck because at some point you need to change your strategy. For example, somebody already played that objective and you will get less points for that objective. So why, why go with that objective? Maybe go with the other one where you can get more points, but then you need to change your strategy. And you always need to think of what should I dismantle? What should I destroy? And maybe I should get this card at the center of the table only in order to destroy it so I can get the resource in order to build the other card. So you can, you can have as many um, unrepaired cards as you want. But there are only four slots for the repaired cards, for the built cards. And you always have to check um, whether you really, really need this card in front of you right now. I know it gives you that crystal resources, which is cool, but maybe right now you need more of the metal or wood resources or need a lot of charcoalium, otherwise you get stuck with getting only cheap cards. Uh, but you can you want to get the other cards, so you always constantly need to think about when is the right timing of building, when is the right timing uh, to, to fill up the slots, when is the right timing of combining, because when you can, you can combine machines as you want, like basically if they are compatible, but once you combine the machines, you cannot destroy them. In order to uh, uh, destroy those machines and get rid of, that, uh, of those cards and get to free that slot, uh, you need to uncombine them. So in order to do that, you need to choose the combining, uncombining action. So it's all through the action, building, combining, destroying, it's through those different actions, but you cannot choose two of the same actions in a row. So that creates an extra layer of thinking over there because you take a look, like it, it's, it's, it's a lot of tight resource management. So when should I? It's all about timing, timing, timing. So it's an engine building all about timing. When should I dismantle? When should I build? When should I fill up? When should I take the specialist? Maybe the specialists, by the way, are great. Uh, when you take the specialist, they are game changers. They are the rule breakers. They make you asymmetric uh, from the other players. They make you different from the other players. And that's where asymmetry comes into play as well, which is really cool. At first, you are kind of the same, but you have, so your starting resources are a little bit different and your machines are a little bit different at the start of the game. So it kind of creates a, kind of a starting point for your strategy. But eventually you can just destroy all the machines from that and build up your own thing over there. But the specialists are amazing. They are, they are uh, game breaking, like for example in Yamatai, which is also Bruno Cattell's game, uh, where you have those. You, at first, you are all kind of the same, and you're building up. But as you get the specialists, you become unique. You become special, and you feel special. And I just love those specialists. And usually, I'm not into puzzle type games, but this game over here, I just amazed how how 
easy it is. So when I read the rules, it was a little bit confusing with all that machinery and where to, where to, how to, how to get the resources, and how to kind of proceed in the game, how to build an engine. But it's not about building engine. It's about um, sustaining engine for a shorter period of time and then destroying it and getting new engine and new engine and new engine all the time. And eventually I got into this game and the rules aren't, um, it's, it's not a hard game. It's on a little bit simpler side, but I mean like it's, it's midweight. It's, it's for me, it's like a perfect midweight Euro, like Yamatai, like Five Tribes. And I, I love that, but though I'm not into puzzle games, this one makes me think because it gives me that emotion of building the engine, which I love in games. So it has all those different, and I love getting the specialists, which makes, makes me unique. So that's cool, and you get the objectives and so on. It's a race to 20 points, but one thing more is that getting to 20 points doesn't mean you win the game, because somebody has, hasn't built much and he has collected all the resources, and you get two points for each majority of the resource at the end of the game. And if you get majority in each resource, you get eight extra points, which is a lot in this game. Usually we ended up like 25, 26 points, so eight is a lot. Um, but you can also get the specialist, which gives you three points for each majority in the game, so you can get even more. And you can get extra points from other things over there, so you can trade and such, so you have to get the help of the specialists as well. Now, uh, if, I, I, if, I to, if, if to say something negative about the game, uh, one thing that is with every bigger game that Bruno Catal has in collaboration with other designers or alone, for example, Five Tribes, for example, Yamatai. And I'm not tired to say that, that this game right now here, this game over here is AP prone. Same as Five Tribes, same as Yamatai. And some people may not agree with me because some people think that, oh, the players are AP prone. Yes, they are as well. Yeah, if you get the AP prone player, uh, then it's, oh, it, it takes a lot of time. Um, because the turns might be, might be really paralyzing because you want to be as, as efficient as possible because there's that tight resource management. Although, choosing of the actions, I thought it might tighten up the game even more and might be kind of a, a you know, too much of the weight on, on the shoulders. But, to be honest, this is not that restricting the actions because you get two actions per turn. They are not that restricting on the other hand. So, I, I, I didn't feel that overweight on my shoulders when I play this game. There's, there are restrictions, but there are so many cool things that you can expand with in order to become uh, more, in order to move more freely in this game. But anyway, what I want to say is that it's still AP prone game. And because, because of this great puzzling nature of the game, uh, because of the different combinations that you can do, because of those tight choices of destroying the machine or keeping it or or what but what, what to get what to combine together what you need now versus what you need later because you still need to look into strategy as well you cannot just do the tactics because like oh, i'm gonna get this machine right now because i need those resources right now no it will take up your slot and then it takes you the action in order to destroy this machine from there why you should do that you know, you need to look at the strategy, how you want to proceed and what objectives you want to get. So objectives will guide you as well. So anyway, overally, I really enjoy this game. It's a great production. It's very puzzly. By the way, the two player game, um, the two player variant is great as well. Bruno Katawa had a great two player variant for Five Tribes from Yamatai. And I really love uh, the two-player variant in the Imaginarium because it's extremely simple. There is no, um, there's no that dummy player. Basically, you get one of those tokens that you have, your own color tokens. It's like a saboteur. So you're gonna block the spot. So you have then two workers. You have your own worker with which you can get the card and you get this token with which you can block the card and this, will be, this, this card will be destroyed. And that's the only thing that it does. But it kind of uh, creates a little bit more tight um, choosing of the spot with two players, otherwise uh, there's just too much freedom. And it plays well with two, it's faster with two, and it still maintains the strategy because the game is still the same. So I, I like the also replayability because of the different combinations and how to explore the game and what objectives come up and when the uh, specialists come up, what specialists come up and so on. So overall, I really enjoy this game. Um, this game will get a silver virtual medal, 
from me. And I want to say thank you for watching. Don't forget that this game will be or is on Kickstarter right now as you're watching this review. There will be a link in the description below. So check it out. It's a really great game. Go back it. And we'll see you another time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.